Thank you for joining us at the Mission Church this morning. If you're watching through Facebook, feel free to engage in the comment section below. As we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, I want you to think about the role of wisdom in your life. Antiquity is no help against stupidity. In other words, it doesn't matter how old you are, we are all capable of making poor choices. As Forrest Gump would say, stupid is as stupid does. We all need help in order to make wise choices. And God's Word provides us that wisdom. The psalmist praises God's Word for making him wiser than his teachers and elders. Psalm 119, 98 through 101 says, Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. In these difficult times of isolation, we're tempted now more than ever to give in to sin. Oh, the old sin, the new sin, the psalmist uses the wisdom of Scripture to hold his feet back from sin, to steer clear from the trap of sin. Maybe you've not done well at following God's word through this struggle. I want you to know that it's not too late to get a fresh start, to get back on track. There is grace and forgiveness. As we prepare our hearts for worship, use this time to renew your commitment to following God as you follow the wisdom of Scripture to steer clear of sin. Let's worship together.
have is patient. Like not honking the horn when you're already 11 minutes late. Love is kind. It's doing all the chores so she can wake up to a clean house. It does not envy. Being truly joyful when your friend gets the promotion, even if you didn't. It does not boast. Love does not remind your kid of his 20-game losing streak. It is not proud. How about we apologize more often? It is not rude. And let's not value a like over someone's feelings. It is not selfish. Love shares that last cookie. It is not easily angered. It breathes when it wants to scream. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not bring up the past, even though right now it'll be really convenient and totally win me this argument. Tonight. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love doesn't get excited when people get destroyed online. It always protects. Love always stands guard. Always trusts. Always leans into the promises. Always hopes. Always sees what's possible. Always perseveres. Always gets up one more time. Love never fails. And it's always worth it. When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? That question that was heard around the world, Jesus didn't limit his answer to just one thing. Jesus said that we must love God and love others. You see, it's not enough for us to just show our love and, and compassion toward God and leave out our fellow man. God desires that we would love him first because that directs and guides our love and that we would also love our fellow neighbor. When Paul said in Corinthians that these three things will remain, faith, hope, and love, he said that the greatest of these is love. And love is our, our greatest motivation. It, it, love is the why behind what we do. Right? Because sometimes we can do things for selfish reasons. Sometimes we can do something to get something in return. But if we do something from a place of love, from that, that selfless desire, uh, then the motivation is, is pure. At the mission, we like to say that love is an action. Love is something that we do. It's not just something that we say. We tend to be casual in the way we use the word love, right? I, I love this song. Or, I, I love these chips. They're so good. Or, I, I, I love that movie. It was so terrific. But love is most commonly used to express our sentiment towards someone or something. But the kind of love that Scripture is talking about is a selfless kind of love. It's about uh, more than just mere sentiment. Scripture says that love is both an action and a marker. If you're a note taker, it's a good time to pull out the Mission Church app. You can follow along there. But Scripture says that love is both an action and a marker. Love is something that we do. It's the, a, the action that we take in showing someone love. It's also a sign or a marker that we are followers of Christ. John encourages us to, to show our love, not just in word, but in the things that we do. 1 John 3.18 says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and truth. John's encouragement is that we would not just express our love with our words, but that we would actually show our love to someone through the things that we do. What will speak louder to someone that I'm trying to love? The things I say or the things that I do for them. What speaks louder to someone who's in need? Uh, words of comfort or a blanket to keep them warm at night? See, love is something that we do. In fact, the way that we love puts our faith on display. And Jesus says that our love is a sign to others that we are one of his followers. In John 13, 34 through 35, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And these are Jesus' words to the disciples just after he finished washing their feet a job that not too many of them were eager to do. He's getting ready to go to the cross at this point in the story. He's just instituted the Lord's Supper. So he just celebrated uh, an, an important meal with his, with his friends, with the disciples, knowing that one of them is about to deny him and another one is about to betray him. And God does not just say to us, love one another. He shows us what love looks like through the sacrifice of his own son for our sins. 
Jesus shows us what love really looks like when, when he sacrifices his life for everyone. This is what love does. Love is something you do. Love becomes a sign of who you are. Love is the, the backdrop for our discussion this morning. Let's pray as we dive in. Almighty God, open our hearts as we open your word. Lord God, we, we thank you for, for loving us first and showing us how to truly love others. Father, as we, as we unpack what it means to follow your word, Lord, may it change us from the inside out. It's in your son's name that we're praying these things, Lord God. Amen. Well, we're wrapping up this series that we've been in called On Mission. And we've been re-exploring the mission of the mission. And we've been looking at new ways to be faithful to God, new ways to be faithful in the way that we live out the great commandment. The mission of the mission is to reach and teach, to live this out on a daily basis. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. This is Jesus' charge to every single believer, not just pastors, not just disciples, not just those with, with the gift of evangelism, but that all of us would take seriously this call from Jesus. The Great Commission compels the believer in love to share and show Christ's love toward others. Caring for someone's eternity is an opportunity for us to act out our faith. It's an opportunity for us to show love to others. It's also a chance for us to demonstrate our faith as we show the love of Christ to people in our life. If you happen to, to claim that you are a fan of a particular team, then, then what you do is you, you go to extremes in order to show your commitment to that group, your allegiance. And so you begin to demonstrate your fandom. You maybe, if you got tickets to an event, you would dress up in that team's colors to show your support. You might even be a face painter uh, in, in your, your opportunity to let others know that you're a fan of that team. Who you're cheering for becomes a marker to others uh, of which team you're declaring uh, will be the victor that day. We don't think twice about showing our support to the teams that we like. I believe there are a few teams in this state that people are willing to show their support for, that they would jump at the chance in order to convince someone that their team is the one worth rooting for. Under normal living situations, when sports are in season, you can walk into any bank hardware store or grocery store, and immediately know who the people are rooting for. What would it be like if this is what we treated Sunday like? On Friday, everyone's wearing their Jesus shirt, carrying around their Bibles, because they want to show their support that Sunday is coming. And they're willing to convince others that, that their faith is the one worth following. What would it take for you to love God and to love others in this way? Not that we need to go around wearing a, a Jesus shirt uh, every Friday, but that we would be willing to show others the, the allegiance that we have in our life to Jesus Christ. Through the Great Commission, we can tangibly love others by sharing the good news of what Christ has done for each of us. To offer hope to those who are feeling desperate. Uh, to be able to remind people that they're not alone in their struggle. To be able to point them to a loving Heavenly Father that cares deeply about the situation that they're going through. The way in which we choose to love others will point them to God. When I was in elementary school, you knew which kids in the block went to the Catholic school called St. Teresa and which kids uh, went to public school. You see, the, the parochial school kids, they had to wear a uniform, and so they had a, a yellow turtleneck that all the kids wore, and all the boys wore brown corduroys, and all the girls wore brown skirts. And so on a typical school day, you knew who was, who was going to St. Teresa and who was going to public school. It was immediately evident uh, which school they belonged to. What would happen in our community if we all started living for the sake of the one who gave his life for us, the one who was raised from the grave? What would it be like if, if it became immediately evident to everyone that we're a believer because of the way that we lived our life? What if they could distinguish that, that, that we're a follower of Christ because of the way that we love others? What an incredible impact that would have in our world. The love of Christ profoundly transforms our purpose in this life. It profoundly changes the way that we live. 
Christ gave his life so our friends, our family, our co-workers, and our neighbors could have a chance to hear the gospel. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 15, For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all. And those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Paul is compelled by Christ's love. He's compelled by the generosity that that Christ shows by giving up his life. And it's this same kind of generous love toward others that compels Paul to love in the same way. Paul's no longer living for himself. He's living for Christ. And that's, that's the challenge for us as believers. Who are you living for? We all fall into this trap of, of comfortability. And we're good at creating our own little bubble. When I was in junior high, I had my own little worlds. I had, I had the, my, my football friends. I had the friends that I went to school with. I had the neighborhood friends. And I also had friends that I did youth group with. And I, I, I didn't like these worlds colliding much. I liked the, the clean, sanitized uh, worlds that I had created for myself. And a neighborhood friend, Bobby Fitzgerald, was asking about this youth group that I went to every Saturday morning. And he wanted to tag along. And I distinctly remember not wanting Bobby to come with me to youth group. Bobby was a bit hard to take at times. He was a little bit selfish with stuff. He was the kind of kid who would do something uh, to you in order to get a laugh at your expense. I didn't want Bobby at youth group. Bobby would bust my youth group bubble as, as these two worlds would come together. I completely missed the purpose of what youth group was about. I completely missed the purpose of why I was there. I was there in order to learn about God, in order to learn how to be more like Jesus. But my, my attitude and my actions didn't demonstrate that. I didn't do a good job of allowing God to transform my purpose in that case. Who are you living for? And maybe a, a better question is, who are you loving for? You see, the love of Christ should, should be enough to move us to a point of surrender. To a point of saying, I, I want to do everything I can to share this love with someone else to be able to share the heart of God with those who are hurting and broken. The the love of Christ should be this ongoing work in our life. Will the love of Christ compel you to love others? You see, the Great Commission is ultimately an expression of our love. We show our love for God as we, we live this out in our life. Your next move is to find ways to creatively show the love of Christ to others. Pray for them. Send them a note of encouragement. Send them a Bible verse. Invite them to watch uh, Easter service online. Have a little viewing party online together. And then trust God with the the results. Because ultimately, God is the only one who can change a heart. We nearly nearly need to be faithful in, in our calling to love others. The Great Commission compels the believer in love to share and show Christ's love toward others. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, We thank you for loving us first and for teaching us how to love others well. Father, may we daily look for opportunities to be able to share the love that you've given us. Lord, we pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, my benediction for you is that you would be compelled to share the love of Christ because of Christ's love for you. I want to thank you for joining us online this week. Uh, as a reminder, uh, our joy box is, is available. You can give online uh, through our, our Mission Church app or by going to our website, or you can always mail a check to us. Please stay connected. Uh, we are answering phone calls and praying with people. Uh, so if you want to get connected in that way, you can do that as well. God bless. Have a great week.
money. Come on, Easter service is starting.